The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. I'm Charles and this is... Hey, it's Dom. I'm in Japan, Charles. I'm bothering to do the podcast all the way from the other side of the world. Well, you've missed out on a lot here because the budget happened on Tuesday night and it, there's been dancing in the streets. Uh, it's the biggest news ever. I, I don't know whether you remember uh, what it was like when, when the Sydney Olympics was in town. The, the budget had a similar feel. Oh, I mean, I feel. it hasn't been missed here, Charles. You know what a big uh, you know economic and, and security partner of Japan and Australia are. Mm, uh, yes. I mean, I was just walking past that big Shibuya crossing the other day with the four or five big TVs. All yes. of them had Jim Chalmers and nothing else, just Jim Chalmers. Yes. There were trucks driving around with, like, mobile billboards, screens of Jim Chalmers' face mm. and the occasional elbow. People are rejoicing in the streets and saying, Chalmers' son, mm. he's done it, he's delivered. That's the message that I'm hearing. But I don't, I don't know the detail. I just know that Australia was the winner in the budget. Is that true? Yeah, well, let's go through the winners and losers because there are – in every budget, there's, you've just, the only way you're allowed to analysis it anymore is – Winners and losers. Right. So You can't uh, have any subtlety. No, so there's no gradation. Work out so everyone's a winner or a loser. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. So first of all, the first uh, winner, I think we can say for certain, is healthcare. Healthcare. Or, or people who need healthcare, which is pretty much everyone, right? So they're bringing back bulk billing. I don't know whether you remember, but essentially it, bulk billing a couple of years ago just became so unsustainable that Almost every doctor stopped doing it. They've massively increased the amount that, uh, like a little bonus for the doctors that they get. And as a result, it's going to bring back bulk billing for lots of people. Oh, wonderful. Because, I mean, I, I, I'm I, not sure, Charles. I, I really prefer this user pays system that we've had. I, Because mm. I used to go to the GP all the time and it was free. Mm. And I, mm. I, the only question I would ask myself was, do I need to go to the GP today? Yes. Whereas then, in, in the past few years, I was asking myself, can I afford mm. To go and get mm. my children vaccinated, for instance, can I afford yes. to go and get my prescription Ooh. refilled? And, and often the answer was no. And look, it it, it made mm. things more lean and streamlined. It meant that I didn't necessarily have the meds I needed. Yes, but that made life more interesting, and, mm. more interesting and exciting. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, there was there's a whole sort of you know, will I die? Mm. Um, jeopardy, jeopardy that that you had that you had in you know you have in movies, but the coalition policy sort of brought it into into everyday life. But, uh, I mean, I think there is a philosophical question, like do poor people deserve to go to the doctor whenever they need to? I mean, is that just not a, a gross misoveruse of resources to allow poor people to to access health care? Well, I mean, the other thing, speaking of poor people, is I hear from certainly from every GP that I've ever talked to in the past few years that they're doing it incredibly tough. I don't know. Uh, of all the people really struggling in our society, apparently, according to GPs, GPs were the, the worst hit of any sector. They were really, oh, yes. they could hardly afford, you know, to, to upgrade their Audis. Yeah, oh, exactly. I mean, poor doctors having to, I mean, I heard stories of some GPs pulling two or even three day fortnights um, having to turn up to work, you know, mm. three or four days a fortnight. I mean, it was just hellish I mean, for them. I would I mean, go, I'd and, go and the GP. Plus, they couldn't go on their ski vacations because they were locked down under COVID and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, they've had a tough few years. I mean, I went to the GP several times and I, I went there for five minutes to get my prescriptions refilled and paid $90 for the privilege, mm. some of which came back from Medicare. And I was just working out who was doing it tough in that equation. Mm. Was it me for paying the $9 and then whatever it was, 40 with after the rebate? The GP was the one getting $9 for, for the 10-minute no. consultation I mean, that's yeah. rough. That's rough. I really it was very kind of him, yeah. really, to do that for me. Uh, so, so that's fixed, right? So, so that's fixed. Uh, museums, museums. Museums and libraries. Is that huge the second women. item on the list? Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going in, I'm going in order of, like, a, a bigness of announcements. Mm. No, no, like, so apparently, I didn't know this, apparently under the coalition uh, things had got so underfunded at some of the big museums in Australia that – Things like the roofs started leaking. Yes. So they've they've given they've given over a hundred million dollars to the National Library. Similar amounts to I think about sixty million to Questacon. Uh, Australian yeah, the Museum National Gallery gets, had it leaking and stuff. Yeah. But Charles, that was the point. 
this sounds like a very short-sighted decision. Mm. The whole point was for the water to come in and sweep away Australia's cultural treasures. They were supposed to be eradicated. The books were supposed to be sodden and ruined. Yes, and the government seems to have put a stop to that. Yes. We didn't want culture. We want to get rid of all of that. It's an indulgence. You don't see. It does strike me as very un-Australian, this decision. You could put a football stadium where that National Library is. It's a perfect position <laughs> right there next to Lake Burley Griffin. Well, actually, talking of which, uh, there's a huge amount going to stadiums, and not just stadiums in Hobart, which was already reported, but uh, but also Brisbane's getting a, a fuck ton, a, a metric fuck ton of stadium funding. Thank goodness. Um, this is a new... This is a new line of business for federal for federal governments. They like usually it's the state governments who who what, what's going on? Is, oh, the electoral politics of Queensland, of course. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean that's that's the thing. Queenslanders, I don't know if you know this, Charles, but but to a man and woman, they don't care about cost of living. They don't care about healthcare, education. All they care about is, sport, is stadiums. That's the you just buy, build a stadium and, and just buy their mm. love. Yes. That's all you need. Yes. They don't need the arts. Just more stadiums. Are they, I hope they're building more stadiums. Well, this is why Sun, Sun Corp Two. Well, this is the thing. Well, it's called the Brisbane Arena, really, and it's it's for the Olympic Games. But it's two and a, two and a half billion dollars that they're putting in. My proposal would be: Why don't they build a roof on top of it, like they do with Marvel Stadium? Oh, what you do is you solve the housing crisis. Oh, what a good idea! Because you could probably fit I don't know a few hundred thousand people inside that stadium. Yeah, and boom. Housing affordability crisis in Queensland, gone. And the great thing is that everyone who's on, on job seeking mm. make them work and, at the and stadium. And I'd love to see the Queensland Greens oppose that housing policy because, they, you know, then it would show what blockers green, the Greens are because they're letting, they're letting good be the enemy of perfect or perfect be the enemy of good. Well, also, can you imagine? By uh, not letting just the... One stadium be the house, but it, it'd be the big house, wouldn't it? That's what they'd call it as a nickname. But Charles, also this helps with the the whole employment issue because um, job seeker was one of the biggest questions coming into this budget. Mm. Everyone in Queensland who who needs a job and is 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 on the, the job seeker payment, they can just be forced to work at the stadium, providing housing, yes, uh, you know, services, whatever. They can just get their jobs in the stadium, serving beers to rich people. Yes, that's right, and. And the thing is, so because there's been a lot of concern, the report that was brought down about JobSeeker a few weeks ago pointed out that JobSeeker is so direly small at the moment mm. that people can't afford clothes that make them look good enough to be employable, right? Oh, so yeah. So they're stu- stuck in a cycle of where they, they literally just have no dignity mm. uh, to their lives. So I think it's very clever that what the government's done is, and they've said, look, it needed to be like a hundred bucks a week more, right? Yeah. And instead, the government's gone twenty bucks a week more, and I think that's really clever because it's like, well, you can't like that's two dollars eighty five a day. You're not going to be able to afford, I don't know, new shoes or whatever that makes you employable. No, nah, God no. But we get the headline that says. That we've increased job seeker, and so you can't really complain because you just look like a fucking whinger if if you go. But hang on, I can't afford anything, even though you've increased my my money. But so Charles, it's sort of genius. Couldn't they then get a slight discount on their admission to the new Brisbane Arena? No, I don't think so. No, no. The way the because way no, they would need no, to no, understand. Dom, Dom, you don't understand how stadium funding works. The government puts in billions of dollars, and then the sports codes charge you money. And make exorbitant profits, oh. and that's how it works. And there's no, there's no benefit, there's no public benefit okay, okay. to any of this public so, money. So unemployed people on job seeker, they could look mm. at the outside of the Brisbane Arena and think to yes. themselves, well, thank goodness the federal government built that rather than increasing my uh, job keeper to my job it, seeker to a living wage. As they, they can just look at the outside. Yes, exactly. Because what they can do, because presumably there'll be big car parks. Yes. They can go, and they probably live in their cars nowadays. If they even have a car, yeah. Yeah, and so they can go and park their car at the state. Well, actually, that might be a bit expensive for them, but, you know, like near the stadium. Mm. And then they've just got a better view while they're homeless. Very, very good idea. And I understand mm. older people uh, are getting... Job seeker, and I'm really hoping that they've worked out the assets test on this so that the higher rate of job seeker is available to people who are living off the income from their second and third homes and don't technically have <laughs> another you know, yes. income source. So that they're the people who most deserve it, I think. In, the, in well, this they're, they're doing economy. it tough, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. 
It's very, very expensive, negatively gearing. You've got to get all this tax advice. Mm. It's brutal. Um, so another winner is Renovators. Oh, thank uh, goodness. Yes. Uh, obviously, uh, you've got to appeal to the constituency of people who watch The Block. The Block, yes. Channel the 9. Block vote's very important. And uh, and so what they're going to do, it's the, it's the Saul Griffith idea that uh, we've had him on the podcast. So he's the guy who came up with this idea of electrifying America. Yeah. And he's brought it out to Australia. He's, he's an Australian. And they've obviously listened to him because they're going to give 100,000 climate change focused uh, low interest loans so that you can upgrade all your, like electrify your houses and make them low carbon. What a great uh, idea. Yes. So if you're already quite idea. wealthy, wealthy enough to, yes. for instance, own your own house, yes. the government will help you by lending you money more cheaply than anyone else can get yes. to make it uh, more energy efficient. What a good idea. I mean, if I owned mm. a house or had any prospect of owning one, mm. I would yes. be so excited yes. about this. It really is. The winners are the winners, really. The winners are the winners. It, it, like, great. Like if, you, if you're already a winner, then this budget really delivers. Oh, look, it, it's fantastic. <laughs> but Charles, full credit to, to yeah. Jim Chalmers for something. I mean, this was the headline here in Tokyo, uh, in the Asahi Shimbun and the Nikkei and all the other local papers mm. are here. Yes. Was it the, bu- the budget was back in black and not the sort of back in black that we heard a few years ago from, um, from Scott Morrison. No, actually, actually going to be back in actual black – which means that the mm. government um, has so much money that it didn't even bother to spend all of it. So for those of us doing it tough, mm. you yes. can you can just sit back and tell yourself, well, the government could have spent a little bit more. It could well, have. Well, yeah, and I, it, look, it didn't I think the choose whole, to do it. It wanted a surplus. The surplus thing, no, but I think the surplus thing was a little bit accidental, apparently. Oh. Apparently, up until a few weeks ago, they were backgrounding that it was probably going to be a slight deficit. Right. But the whole coal price thing has made, you know, coal companies so profitable that it accidentally slipped into surplus, right, which is a bit like, you know how sometimes you go to your bank account and you check the balance and suddenly there's an extra $4 billion in there that you didn't expect. (laughs) Yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that happened to me the other day. I think that's what's happened to the government. It seems like a terrible error, doesn't it, to, that we've actually yeah. managed to get more money out of fossil fuel companies. I thought I thought mm. we as a nation had decided we weren't mm. to do that and that money was to go straight to, to energy mm. billionaires. But that money... That, How's this happened? That what, what has happened is all those extra receipts that they get for, you know, from taxpayers, right, they've been boasting that all the, most of the extra money, like 89% of all the extra money that they've got for all this windfall receipts, the fact that there's full employment at the moment, mm. is going to pay the bondholders in New York um, that Australia has the debt, their retiring debt, you know, so people like, I don't know, Citibank and Goldman Sachs Thank and goodness. anyone who sort of has, you know, BlackRock and Blackstone and Black whatever, you know, like all those bondholders are going to be really – pleased with this budget because that's where, all, you know, they raise all the income tax and then they give it to them instead of, you know, spending it on, Thank say, goodness. you know, Thank goodness, doing it. I'm just looking down at the, the winners here. Um, yeah. And the coalition <laughs> apparently, you know, we've talked about this on the show, the coalition really threw a lot of money around uh, into their own seats for grants, just really unethical stuff. All the car parks, admittedly they were never built, they were just announced, so it wasn't as mm. bad as it first sounded. Whereas Labor, Labor won't have a bar of that. They want ethics. They want integrity in the process of pork barrelling. So they've created a $200 million thriving suburbs program, which will hand out, and I'm quoting here, merit-based and locally driven grants that address shortfalls in priority community infrastructure in marginal seats. In mar- <laughs> merit-based, Charles. Merit-based. Merit-based marginal stri- seat strategy. Well, yeah. It's locally I mean, driven. Just- so driven by the local candidates. There's reeks what I'm of integrity. Getting for that. And, yeah. and thank goodness, because it, it, really the old system stank. And this is, this is for thriving suburbs, uh, Charles. They just want the suburbs mm. to thrive unless it's in the seat that they don't need to win. Mm. I assume. Oh, look, I don't know. I haven't seen the detail on it, but why would you waste money in a safe <laughs> seat? What a stupid thing to do. None of the medical advice contained in the Chaser Report should legally be considered medical advice. The Chaser Report. We should probably go through some of the losers, right? One of the losers that they're saying is gas companies, right? Really? Yeah, because there's this extra petroleum resources rent tax uh, levy that the government's 
been sort of going, oh, yeah, yeah, we've pulled an extra $2.4 billion out of gas companies. Now, my understanding, I might be wrong, but but it was being explained on the radio this morning and the way – it's actually just a cash flow thing. So apparently – it's actually just a changing of the way the offsets work. Oh, that's pretty So tricky. that they get $2.4 billion more this year, but actually across the entire sort of long term, it won't mean any extra tax at mm, all. It's just literally accounting trickery. And you look at some of these things where you go, oh, good, they're cracking down on fossil fuels. But actually when you look into the detail, mm. you go, oh, Actually, they're not. Same with job seeker. Like, oh, they're increasing job seeker. Oh, it's two dollars eighty five. Yeah, right. Pretty you know. less than inflation, uh, I would imagine. Yeah, mm. okay. So, a gas company. You know, the biggest loser that I've seen in in this detail, Charles, in the budget twenty twenty three, mm. defence. They're really? spending nearly twenty billion uh, implementing the aims of the strategic. Uh, a defence strategic review: nine million for AUKUS subs, four point one billion for long range strike capabilities. Three point eight billion for defence bases in Australia's north, and four hundred mil for bonuses to attract defence personnel, according to the Herald. Mm. That's not nearly. I thought they were going to get hundreds, hundreds of billions. That's a massive loss. Yes, you're right. What's the government doing? The living is vulnerable. Yes. Peter Dutton wouldn't have done that. He would have put <laughs> hundreds of billions <laughs> towards that. Created jobs. He would have created jobs and then forced dull bludgers to work in them. Isn't that what he's going to do? Or well, everyone on Job Seeker has to work if if he says so. Is from what I understand. Possibly as an au pair. So, hang on. Can I just understand? They're, they're, they're putting aside $400 million to attract more employees. For defence. For defence. That's what they're doing. So, hey, why do they get a pay rise? Why? I don't understand. Like, why Why does everyone else not get a wage increase? And But they do. Like, no, it's not what? a wage increase, Charles. It's a bonus. It's a signing bonus, I presume. Oh. If you, so, you okay. should join so, the ADF. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna become a um, a sergeant. What would I be? A major? A, a private? Major child or a you private? Start somewhere? I think you start at the bottom. Yeah, you got to start at the bottom. Yeah, because you, you want to you you want to do all the hazing. You, like, you, you got to receive the hazing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Just, that's that's. <laughs> I, hope that, I hope part of the four hundred million is going to, towards hazing supplies. <laughs> you know, ropes to tie people up and the but petrol dumping all nowhere. It is. Yeah. That's what they mean by bonus, signing on <laughs> bonus. We're also spending things. We're it's spending $3.4 billion <laughs> the, on an advanced ropes. strategic capabilities accelerator to try and make Australia's Defence Force technologies catch up with our strategic rivals. $3.4 billion isn't going to be a drop in the ocean. Are you kidding me? I reckon what we should do instead is just ask chat gpt yes. to come up with our defense strategy what a, what a good idea because i think i presume chat gpt came up with most of the budget <laughs> it does feel like that doesn't it like can you write me a budget that on the surface seems like it's good but then when you look at the detail none of it is any good at all and that's exactly what chat gpt would be good at oh, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it it'd be this confident sounding thing We'll increase job seeker. We'll solve climate change. We'll tax gas companies, and then you look into it. I mean, this is what um, Ross Gittins was saying and, about, uh, about it: was yeah. that it, it goes a very little way towards solving a lot of problems. It gives everybody a little bit of what they want, but doesn't do anything too radical or, or mm. different. And this is the thing, Charles, about having a, a Labor prime minister and a, a prime mm. minister from the Labor left. And Albo doesn't get the credit for this. He's a, mm. a full-on, chest-beating, Tory-fighting, lefty Labor Prime Minister. Mm. He has values and passion and beliefs. He fights for the little guy. For the, He grew up in council housing. I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but he did. He understands mm. what it's like to not know where your next dollar is coming from. And this mm. is the most he felt he could do for traditional left-wing yes. Labor values. Just slightly yes. getting a little bit more money out of uh, gas companies with an accounting trick. That's... That's what you get. If it had been the Labor right, he wouldn't have even tried. He wouldn't have even yes, bothered yes. with the accounting trick. Yes, you're Certainly right. Certainly wouldn't have increased, increased job seeker so, by $2 a week or whatever it is. So, well, that's probably the most depressing thing about this whole budget is that this is probably the best that we can hope for. Is that is that what they're trying to do? They're trying to depress it. You know what? I, you know where I think the surplus has come from? I think I've worked it out. Where? The surplus has come from the massive amount that Alba has sold out. He sold out so much, he got like $4 billion extra. Well, well done to him. So Peter Dutton has to give the reply 
uh, to this, I think tonight, as people yes. are listening to this, uh, the, the speech and reply, where can he go? What's left for him to do? What coalition priority hasn't been funded in this budget? It's well, an I amazing think, pincer movement. Already, he, I think he's, no, no. I think he's already hinted at what I think is a genius strategy. Oh, yeah. Which is he actually came out on Wednesday morning and, sa- and said, look, actually the government deserves a bit of credit for putting the the budget into surplus. Really? If I was him, I would just go full tilt and endorse the budget, say <laughs> this is the budget that I would have done. Amazing. And then, and then like imagine the drop in the poll numbers for Alba mm. if D- D- Dutton came out and oh, supported it. The Dutton, the Dutton <laughs> curse. Yes. Oh, it, my like, gosh. The government would be toast. It's a, I think it's that a budget that's what's that Dutton would have Im- implemented himself. That's yeah. brilliant. You know the other thing yeah. Peter Dutton could do if he really wanted yeah. to, to look like an absolute winner of an opposition leader? If you wanted people mm. to just talk about Dutton as the greatest opposition leader in Australian history, yeah. there's already talk about him being replaced by Susan Lee. I don't know whether you've heard those rumours. Yeah, yeah. What a fantastic... One week of Susan Lee and people would be calling for Dutton back, <laughs> wouldn't they? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, just literally tonight he announces, I'm standing down... Susan Lee, Susan Lee is have a go. Over. Have a go. Suddenly, Dutton's poll numbers soar. <laughs> Got a lot to look forward to there. Uh, but the thing is, though, it's also worth bearing in mind that this budget hasn't done anything about the stage three tax cuts. So, mm. even if Dutton's behind in the polls, as a high income earner, as a person with a great personal wealth, all those childcare centres that he and his family owns, he's going to be better off. Yes, overall, isn't he? Well, he's he's going to be richer than he is now. Yes, plus also the hundred and sixty million dollars or so that they've allocated to more pay for politicians. Oh, that, bless. <laughs> that's the other thing that they snuck into the budget somehow, you know, like it, which includes things like travel entitlements because at the moment they, they have to tough it. I think they only get $395 a night oh. for staying away you from home. Which, that, that's a, I mean, th- these, days, that's yeah. only, these days that's only four and a half star accommodation, Charles. Yeah, I know, exactly. I mean, they're basically homeless. Well, I'm going to go out, I'm going to hit the streets of Tokyo and just um, – Drink in the admiration that the Japanese people have for Jim Chalmers and this budget. Yes, um, yes. Japan's very happy. You know, every everyone's happy. Everyone's got what mm. they want. Japan's delighted, from what I understand, yes, by, by this. Yes, uh, and I'll catch up with you um, very soon. Um, but I mean, well done to the new government. They've made everyone happy, unless you're doing it tough. In which case, yeah, I haven't done much yeah. for you, have they? <laughs> there's, there's winners and losers. You can't even. So if if you are doing it tough, if you don't have much money. You can't even complain because you've got a little bit more, so shut up. Yeah, shut up. Our gear is from Rode. We're part of the Iconoclast Network, and shut up. Shut up, poor Just people. shut up. Stop complaining. Would you rather the government gave you nothing? Would you rather that? Would you?